we have the WASI 2024 core mathematics paper 2 general mathematics paper 2 this paper is written by the students from Sierra Leone this is the compulsory aspect we are solving the first five questions in this video before we start Please don't forget to share this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing. Now, let's start with the first question. The first question says, a landlord received a total rent of $240,000 in a year and an income tax of 12.5% and 20% property tax was paid to the Commissioner of Income Tax. An amount of $12,000 was spent on repairs and the remaining amount was saved. What percentage of the total rent was saved? So first, let's calculate the income tax that is 12 percent of 240,000 so that will give us 12.5 times 2400 which is 30,000 dollars then again the property tax is 20 percent of the 240,000 dollars and that will give us 20 times 2400 which is 48,000 dollars then the amount that was also spent on repairs was $12,000. Now total amount that was spent is equal to $90,000. So the amount that will be saved will be equal to the $240,000 minus the $90,000. And that will give us $150,000. Now the percentage of the total rent that was saved will be equal to amount saved over total rent times 100%. And that will give us 625 by 10, which is equal to 62.5%. We have question number two here. Two functions f and g are defined by f of x equal x minus 1 over 2 and g of x maps on to 3x plus 1. We are to evaluate f of negative half plus 1 and then solve f of x equal g of negative 2. The gradient of a line which passes through the point negative 2, 3 is 1 over 3. We have to find the equation of the line. So let's begin with the A part of question 2. We're giving f of x to be this and g of x to be this. f of negative half plus 1. We substitute negative half into f of x then we simplify the numerator for the first fraction the LCM is 2 and that will give us negative 3 over 2 divided by 2 plus 1 so this will simplify to give us negative 3 over 2 times 1 over 2 which is negative 3 over 4 plus 1 Finding the LCM again, we get the result to be 1 over 4. Now the ii part, we have to solve the equation f of x equal g of negative 2. So f of x equal g of negative 2 means we are substituting negative 2 into g of x as you see on the right. Now we maintain x in f of x. So, we evaluate 
and simplify then we multiply through by 2 and that will give us x to be equal to negative 10 plus 1 which is negative 9 the b part we're giving a gradient to be 1 over 3 and we're also giving the point negative 2 3 on the line so we recall the formula for finding the equation of a straight line and it substitutes a point and that will give us the expression you are seeing we can multiply through by 3 and we group the variable terms on the right and the constant terms on the left and that will give us x minus 3y is equal to negative 11 as the equation of the straight line giving the points and the gradient number three is here the angle of a sector of a circle of radius 7 centimeter is 108 degrees calculate the perimeter of the sector Given that 4 over root 3 cos 2 theta minus 14 minus 2 equals 0, find the value of theta, where theta is in the first quadrant, or it's an acute angle. So let's begin with the A part of the question 3. So the perimeter of the sector is given by 2R plus L, where L is the length of the sector, the length of the arc of the sector, and R is the radius of the sector. So multiply the two radii, multiply the radius by 2, and express the angle of the sector over the angle in a circle which is 360 times 2 times the pi 22 over 7 times the radius which is 7 when we simplify this we get 14 plus 3 over 10 then when we multiply we get 132 over 10 that's 14 and that will give us 14 plus 13.2 which will give us 27.2 centimeters now let's proceed to the b part so this is a trigonometric equation so first we multiply through by the lcm then we subtract 2 root 3 from both sides we add 2 retrieve to both sides. We can now divide through by 4. And then we simplify. We take cos inverse of both sides. So 2 theta minus 14 will be cos inverse of root 3 over 2. Then we know that cos inverse of root 3 over 2 is equal to 30 degrees. So, we group like terms, we get 2 theta to be 44 degrees, divide both sides by 2, you get a value of theta to be 22 degrees. That, that is what they are asking you to find. Please don't forget to share this video. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Let us now consider question number four. In the diagram, line segment XY is parallel to line segment UV. Angle OAY is equal to 55 degrees and angle VBW is 25 degrees. Find the value of the angle marked Y. Before we start solving this question, Please kindly share this video for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right. So let's now consider the solution to this question four. 
we are finding the value of y don't rush to go and write y plus 55 degrees is equal to 180 and say that they are co-interior angles no because the line bw is not parallel to the line xy so we can say that instead we can do something like this we can introduce a new line so we can draw another line here like this parallel to the two lines if that is the case then the angle here will be equal to 25 degrees because they are alternate angles then also if that is the case then the angle here will also be alternating to this angle which is 55 degrees so we can now find the value of y by adding all the angles on the straight line b w 25 degrees by 55 plus y equal 180 degrees so 80 degrees will be equal to 80 degrees plus y will be equal to 180 y will be equal to 180 minus 80 degrees which is 100 degrees the b part of the question says that we are to solve the equation the logarithm the logarithm equation so let's solve it we are find the value of x so we apply the properties of logarithm we have log x squared plus 3 equal to log x plus 1 so we apply the power rule on the right hand side and that will give us what you're seeing here the two will come and raise the x plus 1 to exponent 2 since they are all having base 10 of logarithm to both sides we can the log both sides we have x squared plus 3 is equal to x plus 1 all squared so we apply the perfect square identity on the right hand side that will give us x squared plus 2x plus 1 we now group the like terms we have x squared minus x squared we have plus 2x we have 3 minus 1 dividing through by 2 we get x to be equal to 1 question number 5 is here before we start kindly please subscribe to this channel thank you very much for subscribing thank you so now the question says a number is chosen as random from a set of positive integers p is equal to x such that 5 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 24. so we have to find the probability that the number is even or prime a perfect square or a multiple of six so we list the element of p which will be the sample space so from 5 inclusive to 24 and this will give us the number of elements in this sample space to be 20 then the even numbers in the sample space are 10 and also the prime numbers are 7 so probability of choosing an even or prime number will be probability of e plus probability of p so that will give us 10 over 20 plus 7 over 20 which is equal to 17 over 20 We have to find the probability that 
Yeah, the number is a perfect square or a multiple of six. So the perfect squares within these sets are nine and 16. So there are two elements in this set. Then the number of elements that are multiples of six are four. So probability of choosing P or M, the first square or a multiple of six will be probability of P plus probability of M. And that will give us two over 10 plus six plus four, two over 20 plus four over 20. And that will give us three over 10.